In this video, we're going to look at examples of row-level security in SAS Fire. I'm David Stern, and this is the Technical Insights and Expertise series. So in this demonstration, there are going to be three groups that are relevant to what we're looking at. The HR group, the sales group, and SAS administrators, because we're going to set permissions on the table, on the underlying data that we're using in this report, for those three groups. We've got four users that we're going to use in this demonstration. The first user is called Helena, and she's a member of the HR group. Then we have a user called Sophia, who's a member of sales. We have Barney, who is in both HR and sales. And finally, we're going to use the Gel ADM user, who's a member of the SAS administrators group. The data that we're looking at is quite a large table. It has lots of columns and lots of rows in it. The important columns that we're interested in are the department and salary level columns. And we're just going to look at the count of rows of each different salary level in each department. And the general idea is that for the most part, members of HR should only see rows for HR. Members of sales should only see rows for sales. Um, there are lots of other departments worth of data in the table, so for users who can see the whole table, then they'll see a lot of data. But for members of HR or sales, they'll just see one or other set of rows. There are also lots of other columns in the table, but we're not using those columns in this demonstration. The permissions on the table are set up like this. By default, authenticated users get no access to this data. Um, members of the HR department can see the table and can also see selected rows inside the table. So there's a row level grant set up for HR on this table. Members of the sales team can also see the table itself and have another um, row level grant on the table. We've also then granted SAS administrators read info and select at the um, parent CAS library. So this is an inherited select from the parent CAS library. That's not something you get by default. Um, by default, SAS administrators don't get access to the data. But here, we have granted SAS administrators access to the data because it provides us with a convenient user that we can use to show that there is more data in the table than members of HR and sales are seeing. We've then set up row-level filters for the HR department and the sales department that look like this. For the HR department, their row-level filter expression says that the um, uppercase department column in the table has to be one of the values that's in the user's identity groups. So this sub string substitution here um, contains a comma-separated list of all of the different groups that the current user is a member of. And then if the department row in the table matches one of those groups, then this user will be able to see that row, otherwise they won't. The expression for the sales department's a bit simpler. Um, here we just say we'll only show rows where department equals sales. So you don't have to use these complicated substitutions. You can do something much simpler just like that. So here's how the row level grants work. When Helena wants to see data in the HR summary table, we check her permissions to see the rows like this. Helena is a member of HR. So for HR, we then look up the permissions that HR has on this table and notice that HR has a, has a row level grant on the select permission. So we then look up the row level filter expression for that grant and see the expression that we looked at a minute ago. Um, and that means that Helena will only see rows for the HR department. Now, Sophia tries to access the same table. She's a member of the sales department, so we look at the sales teams, uh, the sales group's permissions to access that data. Again, there's a row level grant, so we'll look at the row level filter expression to see which rows of the table we should show to Helena, uh, sorry, to Sophia, and we can see that she sees only sales data. Then we open the report with Barney, who is a member of both HR and sales. And that means that both the row level selects for HR and for sales apply to Barney at the same time. So that means both filter expressions get used in filtering the HR summary table for Barney, and he gets to see the union of both rows. And that's why he can see rows for HR and for sales. Finally, we access the same table and the same report as Gel ADM, who's a member of the SAS administrators group, and the SAS administrators group just has a select. There are no row level filters 
um, on the data that the SAS administrators group can see. So that means SAS administrators see all of the rows of data in the table, not just for HR and sales, but for all of the other departments as well. So let's go and look at all of this for real. So I'll switch over to our demonstration environment. This is a lab environment that we've set up just for this demonstration. And I've got a browser window here logged in as a user called Helena, who is in a group called HR. And in SAS Visual Analytics, I'm going to open a report called the GelCore Shared HR Summary Report. So if we open that report, Helena sees data for the HR department. Now let's switch over to another browser window. And here we're logged in as a user called Sophia. Sophia is in the sales organization in this um, uh, lab environment. And if we click open, I'm going to open the same report as Sophia exactly the same name, it's the same report, and Sophia sees data only for the sales organization. And now we're going to open a third window as a user called Barney. Barney is a member of both HR and sales. So if we click open, I can open the exact same report for Barney, click open, and this time the report is going to show data for both HR and sales. So what's happening here? Clearly, we're opening the same report for all three users, but they're seeing different data, and that's a result of the row-level grants that have been applied to the data. So let's go take a look at how that is implemented. Let's start by looking at the data as it really is. So I'm going to log out of Barney in this browser window, and we'll maximize the window to make it a little bit bigger to see what's going on. And I'm going to log in as an administrator who is able to see all of the data and is neither in um, HR nor sales. Okay, so now we're logged in as the gel administrator who has complete access to all of the data in this report. And let's go open it up and see what this user sees. So we're looking at the same report that the other users were seeing, but now we're seeing data for all of the departments that have data in the source table underlying this report. So let's go, go take a look at how that was implemented. If we switch over to Environment Manager, we're going to be able to see the groups that each of our users in this demonstration is a member of. And the important groups are HR, Sales, and then the SAS Administrators group. Okay, so once we're in Environment Manager, let's go and take a look at the groups to which each of our users belongs. First of all, let's look at the group memberships for Helena. Helena is a member of a group called HR, and that's the only one that's relevant for the purposes of this demonstration. Um, then we'll go and take a look at the group membership for Sophia. She is a member of Sales, and for this demonstration, that's the only group that's important. Um, we'll also take a look at the group memberships for Barney. Barney is in both HR and Sales. And then finally, let's look at the memberships for Gel ADM. And the important membership here is that Gel ADM is a member of this group called Gel Core System Admins, and that group is in turn a member of a group called SAS Administrators. So that illustrates our group memberships. Now let's go take a look at the data. So if we switch to the data page in SAS Environment Manager, we're going to navigate to the table that underlies this report. The CAS shared default CAS server has got a CAS library in it called HRDL, the HR data library. And inside that is this table here called HR summary. If we have a look at the permissions on the HR summary table, we can see that first of all, SAS administrators have got all access to this table. Now that isn't something you would get by default. Uh, normally SAS administrators don't have access to data, but in this case, I've granted SAS administrators access to um, all of the data in the HRDL CAS library. Um, it just, it's a useful thing to have for this demonstration. The important thing is that that means that they just have a grant, an ordinary grant of the select permission on this data. And that means unless anything else applies, SAS administrators will be able to see all the rows of data. Gel ADM is a SAS administrator, and that explains why the Gel ADM user can see all of the data. Now, Helena is a member of this HR group, and you can see that there's a different symbol in the select column for this table for HR. If we click on that, 
then a um, pop-up appears and we can see that a row level grant has been set up on this um, cell. And if we click the filter, we can see that the filter here is that the department column in the data um, will uh, needs to match one of the identity groups that the user belongs to. Now, Helena is a member of the HR group, so anybody in HR will see um, just data for the HR department here. There's also a second row-level filter applied to this table at the same time for the sales group. Members of the sales group have their access also filtered. And here we can see that for sales, their row-level grant just filters for rows where the department equals sales. So that one's a little bit simpler. OK, so then let's go and take a look at the report we built and how that works. If we go back to SAS Visual Analytics, we can build a report that's just like the one that we, we just used to demonstrate this. So here's the report that we just built. What I'll do is create a new report and we'll just reconstruct it. So the data that I'm going to select for this report is that HR summary table that we just looked at. That table has the row level filters applied for HR and for sales. Let's click OK. And now I'm going to go to the Objects tab in Visual Analytics. I'm going to grab a cross tab, drag that over into the report. And then in the rows, we're going to add department and salary level. And then in the columns, we're going to have frequency. And straight away, you can see that we've got a pretty good replica of the report we were just looking at. OK. So we've seen how to build the report. We've seen how the filters are applied. Let's go remove those two filters from the table and apply them again in a couple of different ways. So here I'm going to take, I'm going to edit the authorization for the HR summary CSV file, and we're going to remove those two row level filters using the visual interface here in SAS Environment Manager. And we're going to change it from row level grant to none for HR. And we'll do the same for sales. So there we go. We'll select none as the um, grant for sales as well. And then if we hit preview, we'll be able to see what the effective permissions for HR and sales are going to be on that table. And as it happens, the way that the permissions are inherited from the parent CAS library here mean that the HR group have inherited a read uh, at read info and select on the table, so they will be able to see data in the table, whereas members of sales, although they can read info on the table, they don't have select permission. So right now, sales don't have any access and HR have unrestricted access. So we'll save those changes to the table, and then we're going to go and set those row level permissions again using SAS Studio. So I'm still logged in as JLADM. I'm going to switch to SAS Studio. And once this is finished loading up, I'm going to copy and paste in a bit of code that I've prepared beforehand. Um, so here's the little bit of CASL code, which will set row level permissions on the HRDL HR summary.csv table for both uh, HR and for sales. So if we copy that bit of code, I'm going to paste it here into the SAS Studio window and we'll submit that to run the code. So that's going to set both row level filters at the same time. So that worked. If we go back to SAS Environment Manager, we should be able to see that we have restored those two row level grants. So let's look at the permissions on that HR summary CSV file in the edit authorization dialog. And hopefully we should see that the row level grant symbols have reappeared. Brilliant, there they are. And let's click on those and just have a look at the filter expressions that have been set for each of those two departments. Here's the one for HR. So that is the same filter expression that we had before. And we'll go and do the same for sales.
And again, it's the same filter expression. Okay, so now we've seen two different ways to set a row level filter on a table. You can do it here in the visual interface in SAS Environment Manager, or you can also do it in CASL code in SAS Studio or anywhere else that you can run SAS code. Let's look at one final way that you can set those row level permissions. So again, we're going to set these um, direct grants back to none, like that. And then we'll go set them using the SAS admin CLI, the command line interface. So you can also set row level grants on tables for individual users or much better for groups using a command line interface. Let's hit preview just to make sure that we've restored those um, effective permissions to what they were before. We have, that's fine. Let's hit save. And let's open up a terminal session to the window and I'm going to grab the second bit of code that I've prepared in advance. So this bit of code is going to log in to the um, SAS admin command line interface using its authorization plugin. And then we're going to use the CAS plugin to add a control. And the control that we're going to add, the access control that we're going to add, is for the HRDL CAS library, the HR summary table. And we're going to grant the HR group uh, select access, but only where the department is in one of the departments that the user belongs to. And then similarly, we're going to use the SAS admin command again, using the CAS plugin and its tables uh, option to add another control to the same table, but this time for the sales group. And we're going to grant select to the sales group, but only where the department is sales. So let's select all of that code. We'll paste it here into the command line and run those two commands. And once those are finished, then uh, we can see that the requested permission select filtered and type grant was applied to the identity HR and the same thing was applied to sales. So we should have restored those two permissions. Let's go back to SAS Environment Manager, take another look at that table. Let's edit the authorization again. And this time we should again see that those two row level grants on the select permission have been restored for the HR and the sales departments. I hope that this set of examples of how to set up row-level security in SAS Fire has been useful. Please take a look at the other videos in the Technical Insights and Expertise series for more tips and tricks. Thanks for watching.